Welcome to our session on how to build the best ARM apps for Windows. My name is Yvette Carreras, and I'm a developer working on the future of ARM-powered Windows devices. On my day to day, I focus around debuggability. But I'm here today because I'm passionate to see where this architecture takes our devices and the experiences that customers have. Now, last year, we gave you the Windows Dev Kit 2023. During the year, you saw the Surface Pro 9 and the Lenovo X with 5G, sorry, and the Lenovo X13S devices come to the ecosystem. We also gave you the Visual Studio tools as well as Azure VMs with ARM-powered processors. And for your development of amazing apps, we made .NET and Java generally available. Now with all of this and a lot of your hard work, we've seen great momentum in the platform with tooling, good emulated apps, and great native ARM apps that even leverage the powerful NPU found on these devices to create new AI experiences. Now, today, I'm here to show you how the platform is ready for your applications and how Microsoft and a wide range of our partners are investing in this platform for the future. Now, to get started, I want to share with you an example. Hopefully this morning, you saw Panis's keynote, which was awesome, by the way, where we announced that WhatsApp is releasing a native ARM64 app of their Windows Store application. If you got to experience the emulated version of the application, it's a very good, it's OK, I would say. And that's thanks to the highly performant emulation layer in the OS for Windows 11. But WhatsApp's developers believe in delivering the best experience and the best performance for their customers in any of the platforms that they support. And so the best experience, the best performance, the best battery life, and of course the best platform integration is achieved with native ARM applications, especially if you want to leverage the free AI experiences that we're lighting up and including as part of Windows, such as the Windows Studio FX. Now, I want to show you what this looks like, so I want you to pay attention because the app goes back quickly. We have the native version alongside the emulated version. And the, one of the most important aspects that you'll see is the startup time is much, much better for the native app. Let's roll the video. There you have it, six seconds versus three seconds. Now, as we jump into different conversation threads, you can see how the content loading, as well as the snappiness and the responsiveness of the UI is much better for the ARM64 native version. Let's give it another second. It is very quiet without audio here. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to dive a little bit into what's so special about this platform. So let's go back to the slides. And it starts with our customers. The PC market is changing. It's changing because our customers have different challenges and priorities. Now, customers want energy efficiency, battery life, the best achievable performance for streaming, gaming, and especially hybrid work. Now, it is up to us as developers to create the diverse solutions and experiences for the multitude of devices that they choose to use. And that now includes ARM-powered Windows devices. Now, the ARM platform evolved out of the embedded world, where tiny devices with tough power constraints and a wide range of utilities was a primary focus for a very long time. Now, the platform has developed three main aspects 
that we believe align perfectly to the current PC market, starting with the fact that it is a licensable architecture, which has and continues to foster fast innovation and competition in the hardware space. Also, it is ideal for small form factor devices thanks to the slim and flexible device, sorry, <laughs> with slim and flexible designs, thanks to its thermal and fanless characteristics. And finally, thanks to the years of low power performance focus in this uh, embedded world, you now can bring energy efficiency and sustainability front and center for your customers. Microsoft is committed to continuing investing in this platform for the future. And so are many of our partners. Let me show you what they have to say about porting to ARM. Let's roll the video. ARM and WebEx create a powerful package for high-performance collaboration. We've been having a great time bringing Camo to ARM. One of our sweet spots is taking full advantage of chipset capabilities for Camo's AI and ML workloads. And being able to work closely with Microsoft to really make the software sing has been a powerful experience for us. We quickly realized that the ARM 64EC architecture is what was right for us. Uh, as our application can load plugins, audio effect, which are DLS. Visual Studio has made the transition from Intel x64 to ARM64 amazingly easy. Currently, apps which are written for Intel processors can be run on ARM processor devices, but this doesn't provide the best native experience for users. We are porting our apps to ARM in order to expand the user base, particularly among those who would like to use ARM-based computers like a tablet. Microsoft Emulation Layer is nice, but nothing can match the performance and efficiency of native applications. At WebEx, we're weaving AI and machine learning into all aspects of the collaboration experience. So we prioritize those conversations so that we could quickly take advantage of the most valuable technology. The WebEx suite is used around the world on many different platforms, but in the world of hybrid work, performance has never been more important. Our customers work from anywhere, low bandwidth environments or places with suboptimal noise and lighting conditions, and they demand the most from their hardware and software. The new ARM laptops, um, they are very silent because they don't really come with a fan. And so you might not know as a regular user, but musicians, they really love a silent environment because this is where they can record the instrument. I'm, I'm using an ARM laptop right now and it's super silent and it's very, very pleasant. One of the benefits of the ARM platform is that we're able to take advantage of the Neural Processing Unit, or NPU, to transfer the load of Camo's AI and machine learning tasks. That means it keeps our Windows users' GPUs and CPUs free so that they can gain, stream, and create high-quality content without slowing their machines down in a power-efficient way. Wonderful. Now, the way we see it, the ARM development ecosystem is composed of three major categories, starting with development, which are the tools and runtimes that you leverage to build your apps. Then second, dependencies, the libraries, platform, open source projects, all of the building blocks that you use to make magic. And third, deployment. What are the devices and the environment to which you will deploy your application? Now, to cover more of what we're doing for the development category, I would like to welcome Jemshed Denkawala to the stage. Thanks, Yvette. I'm Jamshed. I work on the .NET team, and one of my key areas of focus is making sure that developers have first-in-class tools to develop apps on ARM for ARM. 
and it is my pleasure to be here today. Let's take a look. Last November, we shipped Visual Studio 2022 for ARM64. This shipped with some of the workloads used most frequently, including desktop development with C++, .NET Desktop, both modern .NET and .NET Framework, ASP.NET and web apps, and UWP apps. Since then, we have shipped more workloads so you can do even more with VS. This includes Visual Studio extensions, game development, C++, node development. Finally, we just shipped Linux C++ development with 17.7. .7. But the top request we got by far was for MAUI development on ARM64. MAUI, as you know, allows you to build a single app that can target Windows, iOS, Android, and Mac. So I'm happy to share here today that we just shipped ARM support for MAUI. And as I was thinking about what to demo here today, MAUI was the obvious choice. Let's go to the demo. So what I have here is a sample called Point of Sale. This is a Point of Sale app that could be used in a restaurant. The server can take an order at a table, take it back to the kitchen, and then use a phone maybe later to have you pay for your meal at your table. This is a Mavi app, and you might notice I've set the target to any CPU. Any CPU tells the .NET runtime that on an ARM64 machine, this application should run ARM64 native. Let's take a look. So just building it very quickly. Should take just a second here. And it's launching. What I want to quickly show you here is this process. Is running ARM64 native. If I look at the app itself, I'll just resize it for the screen. That looks some like, like some yummy food. Some of our favorites, the pictures are all mine. <laughs> so I'm scrolling around the app, I'm looking at it, and I notice something. I see that the price here is using one decimal place instead of two. Looks like a bug, I would love to fix that but I'm not familiar with this code base, so it could be a pain. Thankfully, I have XAML Live Preview. What XAML Live Preview does is allow me to see whatever is being shown by the application on screen within my IDE. As I hover my mouse over it, it's highlighting various UI elements. So I'm gonna just click on this one, and Live Preview takes me to where in the source that element is defined. So I'm looking at it, and I see there is a bug here. Looks like the currency format is incorrect, so I'm gonna quickly change that. And as I save it and check live preview, it's already taking effect. As I switch to the running app, the change has taken effect. I didn't have to stop my debugging, fix the bug, restart debugging. Thanks to Hot Reload, the change was applied for me behind the scenes seamlessly. Let's go back to the slides. That was .NET MAUI. Moving on to C++. We know we can develop C++ apps on ARM today using Visual Studio. And we are not stopping there. Our goal is to make you as productive working on ARM as you are on x64 today and make your apps as performant. We shipped the full ARM-hosted C++ development tools. This included the tools themselves running natively on ARM. They don't just cross-compile. We have peak optimizations like we have for x64. 
My favorite one is Profile Guided Optimization, also known as POGO. This is where you can run a profile training workload on ARM and use the same toolchain utilities and optimization to get the most performance out of your C++ apps. We have ARM64 machine-specific code generation, like new intrinsics for ARM version 8.2. Earlier, I shared we just shipped a preview of the C++ Linux development workload in VS. Using this workload, you can build apps that target both Windows and Linux. Let's take a look. You can go to the demo. So what I have here is a C++ app called Super Tux. It's a jumping game, very similar to the Super Mario Brothers jumping games. And I've, I'm able, I've got two build configurations, one for Windows and one for Linux. We're going to take a look at Windows first. As I'm building that, you might want to quickly take a look at the tools we are using. These are native ARM64 tools, building on and for targeting ARM64. The game's just coming up in a second. Let's give it a second. And it is already up here. Um, the audio is not there, but take my word, it's working. Yeah, oh, thank you. That's the game. You've seen this one before or something similar. Okay, you get the idea. So that was, that was running on Windows. Let's take a look at Linux. So what I have here is uh, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu distro running inside WSL2. So I'm gonna change my target to WSL. It's all running on the same machine. And let's give it a minute to generate the CMake files. Should be pretty quick. So WSL2, as you know, supports full GUI apps and also audio devices. I'm going to select the startup item. And get the ball rolling here in just a second. So as I'm building, it's going to build. It's going to copy the build over to my WSL partition, and it's going to launch the game. So it's doing that now. again. And it's kind of truncated here, so you cannot see the whole thing, but that's the game. And again, running as ARM64. Let's go back to the slides. Moving on to Java. As you know, we shipped Microsoft's OpenJDK 17 LTS release last year. Since then, we made ARM-specific improvements to this. We modified the build toolchain to take advantage of features of the ARM version 8.2 instruction set architecture. We optimized the runtime via large system extension switch. Let me show what this can do for your app. Many of the folks in this room today and probably watching us online may be gamers. So for those of you that love exploring your creativity with Minecraft, I'm happy to share that Java Minecraft, Edi Minecraft Java Edition 1.20 is now available as a snapshot running natively on ARM. Someone said a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> Let's roll the video. So what I'm going to do here is create a world. I'm going to use a specific seed so I can show you both emulated and native side by side. And the Native side is already building. It'll take just a second. It's underway. Looks like the other side has also started building. We're speeding up the video. Native is already ready to play. Emulator's catching up. It should be there in a second. Looks like that's ready to play too. Let's take a look around. Uh, I see some horses in the distance. My daughter loves horses, so I'm gonna to walk towards them. As I'm walking, you might notice the difference in the frames per second in the corners on the screen. And I'm there. So that was Java for you. Minecraft running ARM64 native. Thank you. And with that, back to you, Vet.
Thank you, Jamshed. So, as you saw, you now have the same tools that you've come to love and performant runtimes that you've come to use over the years in x64 now available native and performant for ARM64. Now, another crucial aspect of building and porting our applications is the dependencies that we take on. All of those amazing open source projects out there, libraries, tools, all of the building blocks for maybe other platforms which I'll give one later today, towards the end. Um, now, all of those are very important as you develop your application. So I want to show you an example of an application whose dependencies are now available in ARM. And so will they. I'm excited to announce that Dropbox will be releasing a native ARM64 version of the application coming later this summer. It will come as a beta version for you to try out. Now, Dropbox is a widely used application with a wide range of users, customers, with a wide range of devices. And now those using ARM-powered devices are asking for better support. Dropbox is also a complex application. And like many of other applications out there, has dependencies on tooling from open source and other platforms that are now available. Tooling like Python, Bazel, and Node are just some of the dependencies that you can count on as you start to port your apps. Not only have they taken on the dependencies that are available, or not taken on, but used, they've also started to adopt our Windows APIs to build the best possible experience for their customers. Let me show you real quick a video of what this looks like. Let's roll the video. Now, this is just the set of features that you would expect if now they are coming to native ARM. They've rebuilt their application to make sure that it has the best performance and experience. Things like Sync and File Explorer is what you can expect later this summer. Now, to go further into what we have for dependencies for you to build your apps, I would like to welcome Marcus Perriman to the stage. Thanks, Yvette. My name's Marcus Perryman. I'm a principal developer in the Windows organization. But my focus for the last few years has been on enabling ARM development for Windows. Well, today, uh, I want to uh, talk to you about the work that we're doing in that space to highlight specifically some of the key op open source software that we have enabled since last year. Microsoft has been working for over a year in partnership with Qualcomm, Arm Holdings, and open source uh, partners, Lenaro, who are experts in adding Arm enablement to OSS. Our job has been to target the most popular and the most used open source products for you to develop Arm native. And in the last 12 months, we've enabled over 48 million developer events to ha that can happen right now, ARM native. To illustrate this, I've got time to show you just four of those, uh, and I'm going to use my Windows Dev Kit to do that. That is a fabulous machine. It's my choice for developing uh, with uh, the memory and the performance that we need. Let's start by taking a look at Python. On this dev kit, I've installed the latest Python version. And as you can see here, uh, version 3.11, that is running ARM native. But Python has its own rich ecosystem of libraries. And it's no good just having C Python without those. So in this collaboration with Lenaro, Qualcomm, and ARM Holdings, we have focused on the top 500 Python libraries. We're looking for those that have binary components 
and ensuring that they get ported over to be provided ARM native. On this machine, I've installed a few of those, and I'll do a couple of simple demos just to show you that we have those binary libraries. Import libraries like NumPy, like Pandas, uh, like Pillow and Matplotlib. Let's, let's see those in action. I say, a really simple demo. This is just taking the Matplotlib library. It's using the NumPy calculations, and it's just drawing a simple line. But it's all done demonstrating that it's ARM64 native. Just as another example, let's have a look at Let's take a look at the Pandas library running in a similar way, just plotting those graphs and demonstrating ARM native. OK, simple example. Let's see if we can switch it up and do something a little bit more complex. I'm going to run here an MSYS2 bash shell, which has got a number of different components installed. But I'm doing it with an ARM64 startup. On this um, bash shell, I've actually got installed um, MPV. Uh, that is the MPV player. And I'm going to kick off the build now. It uses Meeson as the compiler, uh, as the build environment. So let me tell you a little bit about MPV. So MPV is a free, open source media player that supports a wide range of video and audio codecs. But the reason this is more complex is because it uses uh, ARM or requires ARM64 components to run, and I'm also using ARM64 tools to build it. Although I'm running in the Bash shell, which also runs x64 components, the Clang version I'm running is the ARM64 native version. And so is the CMake version that I'm running. But in order to produce the executable, MPV requires FFmpeg and libjpeg, along with other libraries, to be available. So here I have my MPV player built. Now, as a dev, I might choose to package and deploy that. I might choose MSIX and Visual Studio. But today, I can now choose to build, a, sorry, to package that using the Wix installer. So from version 4.0 that shipped last month, you can create a Windows ARM native installer using Wix as well. For this demo, I'm just going to run it. And uh, I want you to see and hear the audio that's coming out of this, uh, this player. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. I think that was pretty sweet. Uh, I like that video. That's actually uh, a free-to-use um, video provided by the Blender Foundation. But it was 4K. So we were running that on the BlackRock at a 4K resolution, ARM native, with the MPV player. Let's switch to another demo. So Node is probably one of the most used development tools on the planet. A node last month shipped in version 20.0, their ARM64 native client, and I have it here. I'm actually running 20.2, but just to demonstrate, let me install a simple Tetris application. And there it is. I told you it was simple. But it does play. And just to demonstrate that, if I go into Task Manager, take a look for Node, you can see that is running ARM64 native. <laughs> if 
For my last demo, I want to go somewhere else. So I've shown you products that we have worked on and shipped already. Let's talk about something that's coming soon. I'm going to kick off the compile and then we'll talk about what it is. So this is Flutter. Now Flutter um, is an open source framework from Google. It allows you to create beautiful, natively compiled, multi-platform applications from a single code base. It's been used traditionally for building Android applications that require beautifully interactive UI. More recently, Windows targets were added to that product. And so that meant developers could take those Android applications and change the target to build x64 native applications for Windows. But with this work we are doing to enable ARM64 native, developers will be able to take all of that and bring it to run ARM native on the Windows platform. Let's run the gallery sample. The gallery is the sample app that ships with the Flutter project. It contains nearly every control that's available in the Flutter language. Uh, and you can see them all here. And what I quite like is at the top here, they also have mini stub application uh, uh, views, which contain, uh, for example, here, an email sort of mock-up. And it allows you to see those controls in action including the, the interactions and flows as I jump backwards and forwards and scroll up and down. OK, let's switch back to the slides. So I've shown you today a selection of the open source software that is now available, ARMS native. And in fact, that's uh, not a complete list, but it's quite a, quite a big list of what we've worked on. But I want to invite you. This is a, a public project that we're working on, and I want to invite you to take a look at it, aka.ms arm OSS. And go and take a look at the work that's happening right now. We're showing how to build things from source. We're looking at investigations and sharing the knowledge that people are gaining. And jump in, help us out, and see where we can go. OK, let me hand back to Yvette to finish up. Thank you, Marcus. So we are almost there. This picture, it's looking a little bit more full now. So now you have most of the most commonly used dependencies out there ready for you to leverage. Now, I want to jump in into the deployment category. Starting with the device for ARM development. If you are a developer out there, you'll see that this is a significant machine for you to develop on with 32 gigs of RAM, vast, or good amount of storage, I guess, vast now, this days is different, uh, but 112 gigabytes of storage. And then you also have the latest Snapdragon compute platform. That means you can start developing AI experiences right on this device. And it also has the ports that we all love to use, for example, support for two 4K monitors. Now, one thing that is not about the complete specs of the device, but that I like, is that the chassis of this device contains 20% of ocean recycled plastics. So that's really neat, something that I care about. Now, you might need to leverage the cloud. And for this, we have Azure ARM-based VMs that give you the power of the Emperor Ultra ARM processor for your workloads. You can choose from simple workstation setups to a very powerful device with 64 virtual CPUs. Now, this is Azure, so you will have all the experiences and services that you've come to love with all of the scalable workloads and everything else that you use as part of Azure VMs. Another important aspect is you might need to start testing and trying out the apps that you're porting. 
Well, you can do it with a little bit more scale by leveraging these VMs with Windows 11 Insider. And then finally, there is a 20% lower price compared to x86 VMs. So if for anything, just the cost savings, this is a great option, isn't it? All right. Very important aspect is how do you go and get started? What do I have to support me out there as I leave build and I'm not surrounded by thousands of developers? Well, we have the Microsoft Learn documentation with an actual new step-by-step -step link that has actually gone live this week. So go and look it up. It is at aka.ms, add arm support. We also engage with the community in code project articles, where you'll see walkthrough of different scenarios. We just made an ARM64 EC article available as well this week. Go check it out. And then finally, we have the engagement with the Lenaro community project, where, well, maybe you have an OSS project dependency that is not there today. Well, be a leader and reach out. Request for the Lenaro community project to pour your dependency, making it easier for others that follow you. Now, finally, but also very important, is the enterprise ecosystem. We're seeing great momentum as different ISVs pour their applications over in their platforms. Things from security solutions to IT management, VPN products, and of course, creativity and productivity applications. This is a vast list. Many of these are already there, and some are coming later this year. So check it out. Here we are. This is it. The ARM development ecosystem is ready for you and your apps to start coming over. So start building magical apps for ARM. Now, before I close the talk, I mentioned earlier that there was one platform that was also going to be mentioned at the end, and here we are. I have one more piece. All of you probably are familiar with Unity. Now, first let me show you what you could create if you leverage their real-time platform and what are some of the experiences that we've actually created with them for our platforms at Microsoft. Let's roll the video. to thousands of American lives lost in the last two months of I've succeeded. I'm excited to announce that today, Unity's native ARM64 real-time platform is available for you to target as a runtime. It is available as a beta, and it will be available in their tech stream release later this summer. <laughs> With this support, you will experience a substantial CPU performance gain over the emulator version. And now, I mean, take a look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Don't you want to go and sit there after two days of packed meet, well, sessions? <laughs> at least I do. Um, now, this, what you're seeing, has an amazing quality with a 25% faster scene loading time and a 35% lower CPU time per frame compared to the emulator version. Now, like many other apps out there, Unity's is also embarking on a journey, and a journey where it first comes with availability, and then you start targeting performance and new experiences for the hardware in your hands, right? So later this year, with their TechStream 23.2, you, you will see the DirectX 12 render pass support as well as Unity's render graph for developers to build even better optimized versions of their games, apps, or anything else. All right, now, many of you might want to actually go and try this out, and you can. 
With the QR code in here, you can go and get access to this particular URP scene so that you can try it on your own ARM device. I look forward to seeing what many of you go and create with this amazing and performant real-time platform. So, here we are. Again, the ARM development for Windows, it's ready. So, what do you need to do? Well, first of all, go get a device. And if you're a strong developer and have preference on having very cool, tiny black device, I suggest go and get the Windows Dev Kit 2023. Now, I actually like to call it Project Volterra, but don't tell anyone. Then go and get the native tools that you've come to love and use throughout the years. And then change the target. Target ARM64 and recompile. Is that all you need to do? Maybe. Maybe your app only needs to just try to build and it might work. Maybe you need to change the dependencies that you're leveraging. Maybe you need to go and reach out for support. Maybe there's a few tweaks you need to make. So reach out and embrace the community. Help others if maybe your journey into porting was simpler or not. And then finally, I would be a very bad developer and my devs would be very upset at me if I didn't tell you that you should test your applications before you ship it. So, join us. Join us in empowering individuals and organizations to do more all over the planet with your applications. Thank you. So we are done, but we are the last session of today. So for online questions submitted through Bubble, Bubble, Pubble. Uh, we will be answering those in the next couple of days, so please be patient with us. And then for all of you here, we're gonna be at the end of the room if you'd like to chat and ask some questions. And that is all, thank you.